in the grand tapestry of india's law enforcement the term policeman conjures images of power authority and perhaps a touch of old school grit but lurking behind this image is a tale of untold complexity where the voices and stories of women in the force often get lost in the shuffle of tradition and stereotype welcome everyone to a conversation that promises to be as enlightening as it is empowering today we are stepping into the world of policing through a different lens one that's not just about brute force and tough exteriors but about resilience determination and breaking barriers and who better to guide us through this journey than someone who's not only walked the talk but blazed the trail for generations to come i'm meloni bhat and joining me today is none other than dr kiran bedi a name synonymous with courage resilience and the relentless pursuit of justice as the first woman to join the officer ranks of the indian police service back in 1972 she is not just a pioneer she is a force of nature she is the winner of the president's police medal the reforms she introduced in the prison sector as inspector general in delhi won her the ramon maxase award in 1994 she is also the first indian and the first woman appointed as the united nations police advisor and head of the police division in 2003 she was also the lieutenant government governor of puducherry from 2016 to 2021 i'm delighted to welcome dr kiran bedi ma'am it's a pleasure to have you here as part of the launch summit of et prime women leadership awards 2024 thank you meloni that was a long introduction but so richly deserved <laughs> and we are very Thank excited you. to start this conversation with you uh, ma'am i want to talk uh, you know when you joined uh, the indian police service as the first woman in india to join the officer ranks talk to us about some of the internal biases the pre- prejudices perhaps misogyny that you might have faced in a very male dominated bastion well i was like a museum piece in uniform though everywhere where i went and in uniform people smiled they didn't resist there was a smile and i think there was a dignified acceptance there was not resistance indian culture respects women in position so i think i benefited by my indian culture while it was um, it has one way of looking at women but it has a another way a very respectful way of looking at women in position and when i was seeing in uniform i was like a s- attraction and uh, there was a cartoon k uh, and i'm on duty uh, in goa traffic police i remember there was a cartoon in goa media uh, goa so i still have retained that cartoon you will love i'm getting that and they said the cartoon says um, it's not a riot you know people policemen are using the sticks to move them away and the cartoon says it's not a riot they all come to see her so this is how the people were i think it was like very dignified respectful acceptance but when it came to my peers and my own department since being strongly masculine I had a big question mark it they started to look at me as an intruder so in my department i was an intruder whereas for the people i was like a welcome change but they welcomed it for the sense that they've got a woman in uniform and that they didn't didn't expect this woman in uniform to hit them hard but probably take care of them and meet their needs so i think this is the way it was the department's reaction was different and uh, people's reaction was different no i mean it it it, it would have been uh a tight rope walk right because there's uh, acceptance coming in from the people but from within uh, you know maybe the change was uh, you know slow to come in or slow that acceptance as you pointed out uh, you know was grudgingly given given the persistent challenges faced by women in the indian police force you know there's high attrition rate there's also under representation in leadership role uh, from your vantage uh, 
what the structural and systemic barriers that you think contribute to this disparity and how do you see this as being addressed look i think the since it's been a male dom uh, i think women, men have not spoken out for the reason that they had family support while doing 24 by 7 right men haven't spoken out they haven't complained because they had either the mothers at home to run their family or homes and or their wives at home wives see now you have spouses then you had wives so you had a, a wife at home a stay home wife and you also had a mother at home right so men could work 24 by 7 and they could uh, go back home once in a while when the department permits them things have dramatically shifted yeah now when you have the woman out of the home and she's herself a police officer herself she's nobody at home she if she doesn't have a mother she has nobody at home right and if the mother in law is not cooperating she's nobody at home the man is anyway out at work whether he is a cop or so therefore for a woman in uniform if she has a she is a mother and children she has nobody at home men did not complain because they had somebody at home women have now nobody at home and if she therefore i think that's a question big question mark which the society will have to address now in the armed forces you have organizations like army wives welfare associations etc but it's predominantly men and the women's organizations have looked after uh, the families but here we don't have police welfare major organizations which would now look at a woman who's in uniform and outside the home who looks after her a uh, school after school children so when you talk of attrition that's the answering uh, which i'm giving men did not have the attrition because they had somebody to look at home you will have attrition now when women join in and now they have uh, adult adolescent children heading for examinations etc they were who is at home so i think this there's a big challenge a challenge which is coming to society which we've not addressed a a that means you really need social systems if you want women not to be leaving their jobs which they are very willingly joining and some very capable women are joining all ranks from the ips down to the constabulary very many brilliant women and masters studies technology computers very educated girls are coming in and a very uh, brilliant women are coming in i think that's an area which is going to be addressed in the coming years and that's going to be a major challenge is when a woman also is in uniform and 24 by 7 and she's far away from home she has a home she has a home and if particularly if she's a mother then what support systems does the department provide like we looking at the corporate world to provide similarly we'll have to address uh, the so some police office have started to have playway school playway schools for children the uh, call the playway uh, the creches as you can call but they are not near home so can she drop the child near home and that go to work i think we are leaving her in a very stressful situation particular therefore departments need to be conscious of the fact that who is she leaving at home i do remember during covid times when i was working in pondicherry i did i encountered because everybody's leave was cancelled and everybody had to be on the street and many women cops and they could not go home could not go home for days and days you needed everybody to uh, on the streets and how do their homes get managed or or when they go back how do they uh, sanitize themselves again but who is at home but i remember a woman constable who she was what she was doing she was cooking before she was leaving for work making food for her mother in law before she was leaving for work and uh, did not know what the what how would do the child but she was leaving the old child with the mother an aging mother in law the uh, a uh, man was also a police officer and then rushing back after 12 hours of work again to go back and cook for the mother in law and look after the child etc i think this is distress distressing so i think these are 
you know what capability of a woman is not a question anymore she's are being equally trained she's being given opportunities to work and she has a she has a positions now to deliver i think the real challenge is home front which i don't think we still have policies in place do you see a mindset change because this is a structural problem this has to also be uh, coming in at a, at a policy level but do you feel that there is an interest in this being addressed or it's you know they're managing and we can you know live around it there is a work around whatever is happening let it happen what do you see maybe it's a first generation of women who come in by the time you come to the second generation the first generation will have come into middle class but the indian culture still provides mothers in law at home fortunately but what happens to the uh, those who don't so i think you are looking at now individual individual families right that means the department needs to have a conscious decision of understanding who is leaving what behind and we, unfortunately we don't have day schools we have only half schools the schools finish by 2 o'clock 3 o'clock you don't have day boarding schools so you don't have the culture because it's working it's so far uh, uh, needed met the need of, of a, a, a providing father where the mother is at home now you have a providing mother also and nobody is at home so you don't have a day school right. so that where she has a day boarding and all the other activities of the child so i think the children are suffering of the women cops the most but it's a silent suffering we need to identify that right uh, you know and i i i want to sort of uh, delve on this a little bit deeper so uh, the the women's day 2024 theme is inspire inclusion and considering the specific challenges you know that have been documented in india's policing system and the challenges that you've spoken of how do you envision a uh, recruiting and nurturing the next generation of female officers because they are going to demand all of these things that you're pointing out and what sort of infrastructural changes do you believe are necessary to support the success of these women women are being recruited right they being included inclu uh, recruited on merit and lot of ncc cadets lot of sports girls lot of outdoor activities strong girls strong will these are women who are wanted because no woman constable can be a woman can be forced to say join the police she has to want to join so first of all you got the will she is not joining for the sake of a job she is not going to look at uh, policing as a job she is going to look at policing as a challenge which is a sense of fulfillment for her so i think the uh, recruitment is on on track what you have to see is keep them on in the board keep them loving the job keep them dedicated not becoming saying and not becoming divided and and uh, conflicting in their minds what do, how do they serve because this is a a job which crosses time limits you never know and there no there are no uh, time to time to keep sometimes you may certainly have working hours but sometimes there is a crisis and in the crisis can last for days and days so i think that's an area recruitment is right keep up training them upskilling them keep deploying them keep getting the sense of fulfillment keep the psychological well being keep keep connecting with them do keep doing one on one as welfare with them that's the role of the senior leadership senior leadership will have to keep talking to them chatting with them non hierarchically non -hier and then mentoring and allowing lot of networking and lot of bonding i think uh, uh, delhi police has thousands of now uh, women in the cops i think they need to network they should allow a network they should allow bonding the other day i at the at home in delhi police the other day i came across these many young ips officers and i said how many of you are there they said we quite a few now i said do you network do you meet each other do you meet over a lunch now that you are now 20 30 plus women ips officers in delhi police i said now you're a good group do you have a lunch together once in a month at another's place do you network do you bond as a sisterhood as a sisterhood i think that's not yet come it stepped in we should allow this kind of bonding where they can so they are collaborative in nature not competitive 
we must not allow competition to come in they will get their seniority they'll get their ranks and um, promotions and posting i said don't compete with each other now this is one thing don't compete just let things happen you give your best wherever you are but you need to bond and you need to share and you need to talk to each other and need to bond and there should be a sisterhood and i said why don't you have turn by turn a lunch or somewhere where you all meet and you talk to each other in confidence because you need networking now you need their lounge they could create their own lounge you know the ips women's lounge or gazetted officers lounge so go up to be ranked those who come gazetted ranks so ips group and the uh, not uh, the non who are entry group may get into the ips one day bond them bond with the next generation so that you cut across barriers what has happened in male policing is very hierarchical right we must women must break those hierarchies and connect with each other bond together and so many thousands of them together in delhi police is a very big number rank and file but at least few women officers also talked about the welfare measures of the rank and file because they should be looked up as mentors for them yes they um, you know become mentors for each other sponsors for each other and you know a strong sisterhood uh, which as you say should be collaborative uh, you know rather than being competitive i want to talk about uh, prison reforms uh, reflecting on your pioneering efforts in reforming the hard prison complex and advocating uh, dignity for prisoners uh, especially at a time when open prisons are being considered uh, can you share any insights uh, linked to this and how uh, you know this can actually translate to contemporary prison reforms in india uh, which are doable you have a model 1994 when i got the ramon maxse award it was a recognition of this model it was a recognition of a 3c model which we developed and 3c model meant collective corrective and community based our prisons in 1994 that was it collective it was corrective of course but it was collective what do you mean by collective it was uh, collective by ngos and the prisoners became panchayats inside it became a township management prisons became a municipality where everybody went to school they learned skills training they observed their self regulating festivals right they had also spiritual programs going on collective corrective community based that is when the ngo stepped in see we have a model and the model is the 3c model collective corrective community based if we follow this model you have on the answers and you know what is zero sum it's zero cost to the government such a model is self regulation you have a community within and they are not they are they all have a skill to come the only thing is they went wrong in the skill but they all are coming with some hand skill so if we could accentuate opportunities to uh, upgrade their whatever skill they came with particularly hand skill and or or art and craft agriculture uh, manufacturing prisoners need not waste kill time of the prisoners they can be put to work under trial or uh, uh, convicted doesn't matter skills can be found in the many many ngos and the government schemes itself is upskilling which they have they brought in uh, skills programs there so i think we can bring a lot of dignity and this this way they will not return to the prison again the we can check the revolving door by this 3c model practice collective corrective community based create panchayats out to the prisoners provide education the way we did everybody went to school inside the prison with used school books so no cost to the government teachers were prisoners educated prisoners who were teachers so we had teachers panchayats which would be pub books came from donation came from publishers we have a model miloni we don't have to go to the west we don't have to go to the west actually west can look at the east west can look at our 3c model which they did at that time when the uh, uh, the maxa say recognize this model unfortunately what we've happened is we took taken bits and pieces out of it though the policies are intact the government of india by the bureau of police research and development policies are intact it's about the execution execution of more than 1500 prisons in india the it's the execution collectively the children's education in the inside the prison play with schools inside the prison women empowerment women being women being upskilled while in prison all this is achievable without government budgeting 
and can all be NGO driven, community based driven and you have skilled people inside the prison. You identify the skill. Don't ask them what offense, you know what offense they've committed, but ask them what skill have you come with? What's your skill? Apply that skill and create small classrooms and get them get them employed, deployed. So is the will even corporate funding in it to come in? Is the will missing to do it? Yes, it can be. It's possible, and we have a model. It's not at all difficult, and it's so simple. And then it also creates you know that concept which we brought in the ashram concept. Then when the heart started to be called an ashram, it was ashram. It was also bringing in meditation. So meditation programs inside mindfulness, you may call it, or meditation, because that calms your mind, which is revengeful otherwise and angry. So I think we have solutions and based on Indian culture. All right. Now, this is now my last question to you. You know, as someone who's broken barriers, paved the way for future female leaders in the Indian police service, uh, what would you say would be your top learnings uh, from your journey that you would possibly like to impart to Indian girls and women aspiring to leadership positions within the force, uh, considering the evolving attitudes towards uh, gender and marginalized identities over the decades? Indian girls are coming a long way. They are aspirational and the opportunities are coming in a big way uh, as per the government schemes now. But you see, there are at different levels. There's a bottom level, there's an upper, lower middle and the upper middle level. But opportunities of education and skills development and recruitment and on merit, I think in, are enormous. The ball is in the court of parents and girls. How parents groom their girls and how the girls take benefit of the opportunities. I think ball is in the court of parents, which is homes, and then the girls. But remember... They will not get it any getting anything in a, uh, unless it did deserved and earned it. So now they have to remain aspirational, keep earning and deserving, and keep making yourself stronger. You are the woman yourself. Nobody's going to give it on your lap free because this competitive world. So therefore, I would say, believe in yourself, keep aspiring, keep striving towards it, keep building on the opportunities and make optimum utilize today india is on the upskin for the for, and they are very they are valuing uh, the presence and the participation and equal contribution by this female gender the kind of barriers that women face just in getting out of the house i think those barriers also need to be managed so a good uh, message also for the parents uh, to let uh, their girl child's dream aspire and achieve uh, Dr. Kiran Bedi, what an honor and a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much for your time and for your thoughts today. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Well, that's it from all of us. We hope that you had some great takeaways from these very inspiring women leaders. And we hope that you'll continue to watch our progressive coverage on ET Prime Women Leadership Awards. For more such videos, do log into our website, economictimes.com. But from me, Maloney Bhatt, and the entire team, thank you very much for watching.